Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll be joined by Teresa Alvera from the Prairie Center Arts Foundation. Then we'll talk to Martin McGregor about the annual recycling event. We'll close out the program by meeting Suzanne Pachel and Bob Schmidt from the Sister Cities Commission. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Prairie Center Arts Foundation is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to the growth and excellence of cultural arts in Schaumburg. Here to tell us about an exciting special event is Prairie Center Arts Foundation Development Coordinator, Teresa Elvira. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. What exciting event are we talking about? Uh, Come Wine With Me okay. is a wine tasting event. Uh, it will be held here at the Prairie Center on the 18th of April. It's a Saturday evening from 7 till 10 p.m. Okay, and what, 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 what do you do besides drink wine? Uh, well, there will be wines, several wines available for tasting, uh, probably in the neighborhood of 75 to 100 different tastes. Oh, really? In addition, yes, we'll also have um, microbreweries here um, that will be offering samples of uh, their brews, and they're local. Uh, um, and then we will also have a distillery or two that will have some spirits. How about here. Granite City? Is Granite City invited? Granite City will be here. Ram will be here. Okay. Um, Sam Adams, I believe, will also be here in terms of the okay. beer that we'll have available. How about the snacks? Uh, you know, the food. Uh, we will have food provided this year. A um, couple of new developments. Uh, one is a catering company. Uh, that is located in Roselle. Uh, they're called My Chef Station and Baby Carrots Catering. They will be actually doing food demonstrations. So they'll be providing some light bites and actually showing people how to prepare them. Uh, so that will be something new this year. Um, and we will also have uh, tastes provided, little nibbles provided by Whole Foods, oh. Trader Joe's, and oh, Trader Joe's, that's great. Yeah. And, and they just uh, started up in Schaumburg, didn't they? Yeah, they just opened last week, I think. Okay, all right. And how much does it cost, and who do they contact? Uh, $35 is the cost of admission. Uh, you can buy tickets at prairiecenter.org, uh, or you can call the Prairie Center at 847-895-3600. Now, besides uh, this, this special event that's coming up, what, mm -hmm. else, what other events do, are sponsored by the Foundation? Uh, well, we do usually at least two major fundraisers every year. Uh, the spring one has been Come Wine With Me. In the fall, we also have a major event um, as well. And we just um, actually uh, set a theme for the fall event uh, to celebrate the Prairie Center's 30th season coming up okay. uh, beginning in September. Um, it also happens to be the 30th anniversary of the premiere of the Back to the Future uh, oh, really? movie. And so uh, the theme of this year's fall event will be uh, back for the future uh, to back the arts of the Prairie Center. people going to dress up or anything? Or is that, or is that <laughs> yeah, I mean, there will be several opportunities, you know, to do that. I mean, there's there's several years to choose from throughout the series of the, of the movies from 1855 all the way up to two, 2015. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, um, people want to dress up in costume um, perfectly welcome to do so. It makes for a really fun evening. That's a, that's a great mo great movie series. Uh, yeah. Michael Fox, right? Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be really fun um, for the people who come to the event. Well, tell me more about this, uh, you know, uh, other things that the foundation does. How much money do you, do you raise? And, well, um, and what, do you get for mainly, your, what do you get for your dollar? And <laughs> mainly, uh, the foundation supports programs at the Prairie Center. So we support everything from uh, helping to supplement the season of entertainment at the Prairie Center. We also support in-house youth programs at the Prairie Center, which includes the Schomburg Youth Orchestra, uh, the dance ensemble that performs Nutcracker every year. Uh, we support um, choir. the choir, the youth choir, which is in their second or actually first full season. Sure. Uh, and then we also uh, support uh, Schomburg Summer Theater and the Screen Test Student Fest, the Student Film Festival. Will there be any entertainment to, uh, at this event? To come down? Yeah, at the wine event, yeah. yes. Uh, well, we actually it. will have a couple of harpists from the Schomburg Youth Orchestra that will be playing. Two harpists? Yes. Wow. A harpist duo. And then uh, we will have uh, members of the Schomburg Youth Choir performing as well. Okay. So I'm very excited about that. It's the first time we'll have them at this event, and uh, I'm really glad to be able to showcase the talent that we help no, to support. Is this the second or third year in a row? We, how, how many years have we This is our it? second year for the wine event. Okay, and how, what kind of attendance did we have last year? 
Last year we had uh, about 170 people. We're hoping to um, surpass 200 this year. It would be nice. So there'll be, there'll be wine stations all over the place. Is all that... over the um, all over the main floor of the Prairie Center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People can come come in there and and, and nosh a little bit and yeah. sip some. What, what's your favorite wine? wine? Uh, I prefer a Merlot, a nice Merlot. A nice Merlot. A nice Merlot. D you know, there, there, there's a Merlot you should try. Yeah. And and, and they they had it down in, in, in Springfield and and up here too as well. It's it was called Marilyn Merlot. Marilyn Merlot. Yes. I'll have to give that a try. And it had, it, I, this, I'm serious <laughs> about this now. And and, and on the cork. It had a lipstick. Uh, like, oh, like, goodness. Like, 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 like a, you know. Perfect. But uh, it, uh, there was a, I think the Sangamon Club down in Spring, Springfield had it, and they had it up here as well. Fun. So maybe you could, you know, rattle around a little bit and, and see if we can, you can, we can get I'll have Marilyn, to give that a try. Marilyn Merlot. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Both of these events are events that are very well supported by the community, yeah. um, uh, including yourself. And... Uh, you know, we're delighted to be able to to offer these kinds of opportunities to showcase the Prairie Center, sure. to showcase the programs that we help to support. How much did you raise? Money did you raise last year? Um, Approximately for the wine event, uh, I don't probably somewhere in the neighborhood of of two to three thousand okay. dollars um, profit. You know, over yeah. But it's a nice event. It, it promotes the Prairie Center, and, yeah. and certainly that's, yeah. that's important. And the programs. I mean, you know, the programs that we support are near and dear to us. And, wow. uh, you know, in addition to the ones that I mentioned before, we One also... One more time. Call, call what number? 847. Yes. 895-3600. Uh, we'll do that again. Okay. 847-895-3600. Well, thank you, Teresa. Thank you very Appreciate much it. for having me. Well, thanks for being here. A sure sign that spring is right around the corner is Schomburg's annual recycling event. Learn more next here on Speaking of Schomburg. With the weather getting warmer, it's time to tackle that spring cleaning project. Many of those household items can be recycled through Schomburg's annual recycling event. Here to tell us more about it is Schomburg's logistics coordinator, Martin Metreger. T tell us about it. Well, it's a really huge event. We've done this for quite a few years now. Um, we collect everything from um, electronics, um, fire extinguishers, eyeglasses, telephones, cell phones, wiring, old Christmas lights, um, did I say fire extinguishers? And we this year we added something new. We added books to our list of books? recyclables. Yes. Really? Yeah, that's big. Um, uh, a company called Scarce, organization called Scarce, will be collecting them this year, and they get used for people in need that can't afford new books, and uh, also anything that uh, isn't so good for reuse. They'll actually uh, shred them and reuse the. Uh, Paper itself. What about TV sets? So, we're definitely collecting television sets. It's um, a huge item at our event. Last year, we collected over 50,000 pounds of really? television sets. Um, this year, I have no idea how many we're going to get. But uh, how about tires? Uh, we we are not collecting anything like tires or okay. hazardous waste. Okay. Um, the only thing close to hazardous waste we are collecting oil and antifreeze. Okay. So and that antifreeze and oil gets reused as well. So. Really. How long have you been doing this? So since 2007, it uh, started out small where we just collected electronics and document destruction. Now it's expanded to a very nice large event that everybody could take advantage of. So you, you still take, take care of documents, so you can, they can shred them right there? Yeah, um, we have a, a two document destruction trucks on site. It's a limit of two uh, boxes per resident. The reason we limit it is that we want everybody to be able to take advantage of it. It's not for businesses, it's for residents only. And this is not just Chambry though, is there? Or is it just in no, Chambry? It's a community-wide event. Okay. Um, anybody could participate in it. Uh, people who are also part of this event will be uh, the Schaumburg District Township Library, Schaumburg Township District Library, sorry. Sure, that's all right. And then they also, we also have the Schaumburg Environmental Committee and School District 54, they all take a big part in this. Event. When does this take place? It'll be on Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And where? It'll be at the School District 54 Admin 
office, which is on Schomburg Road. It's 524 East Schomburg Road. Just across the street, right? From yeah, Village Hall. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, I, I, how about traffic control? I know last year you had cars backed up uh, well, actually, <laughs> pretty Well, actually, last year we did pretty good. Um, the year before we had some issues, par partially because of the uh, construction that was on Schomburg sure. Road. But last year, we, our times went down to, we, we timed the cars as they come through the event, and it only took about 10, no longer than 15 minutes once you entered the grounds to go through the mm -hmm. entire event itself. So we, we hope to keep those times down to a minimal. Plus, uh, we have a bigger parking lot now in the uh, school district um, so that we can actually buffer a lot of the cars and get them off the roadways themselves. So, so computers, television sets, uh, uh, monitors, uh yeah, exactly. Monitors, uh, anything electrical, all the way up to the size of like a microwave. They'll take microwaves, no white goods, uh, which would be washer or dryer, but anything up to the size, anything around the high school or the house, like a curling iron or anything that has a cord to it or even takes batteries, they, we will take at the event. We also do clothing as How well. How about old paint? Uh, we won't take paint at this event. So. Okay. Um, there is a place down in Naperville that handles paint and other hazardous waste if people need to take advantage of that. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And, and uh, how, how is this promoted? I mean, how do we get the word out about this recycling event? Well, um, we do do, uh, obviously, a press release. There's been a few news articles. We have it on our website. School District 54 puts it on their website and their news article. The uh, Schaumburg Township District Library goes through um, their avenue of advertising as well, anywhere we could think of. Uh, and what, what, what's, what's the time frame for, for it? I mean, when, when, when does it start in the morning? When, is, when does it, it end? It starts at 10 a.m. and then we end it at 3 o'clock sharp. By 3 o'clock, we're pretty tired. We just want to go home. But I can understand that, yeah. yeah. Now, who picks all this stuff up? Are there certain companies that pick up different segments of what's being recycled? Is yes, uh, Elgin Recycling is our big electronics recycler. They, they're collecting electronics and televisions and wire and stuff like that. Cell phones? Uh, they're collecting cell phones as well as... Um, Pagers? Yeah, just about anything like that, okay. exactly. And then um, um, the we have U.S. again that does our clothing and textiles. Oh, so people can bring in clothing as well? Sure, clothing, like old belts, purses, shoes, stuff like that we'll take really? as well. Yes. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. Yep, and then we have Working Bikes. Working Bikes is an organization, and they take old bicycles, and they uh, rehab them, and they either sell some locally and use that money to ship bicycles to third world countries so people can use bicycles to get to their job or place to work. So. How many bicycles do you, do you normally get? Um, it varies from year to year, but somewhere around 30 to 40 bicycles. So, of all different types. Really? And where do they rehab them? Uh, there's different people that volunteer. A lot of them do it in their garage or their uh, backyard. Uh, they're all, it's one, one big organization that, um, developed and people can just sign up to rehab these bikes, you know. So a lot of, you know, a lot of retired people tend to do this. So, uh, okay, ones. explain this to me now. Um, you, you take bicycles, bicycles, someone drops a bicycle off, what happens to it? So they'll take all the bikes back and it goes to um, different locations. Mostly, depends on who's working the event. It'll go to one person's um, backyard or garage or something like that. And then other people take those bikes. They work on the bikes. They rehab the bikes. They use parts from one bike to fix another bike. And uh, again, they, they sell what they can locally and then use money like that to help fix more bikes and ship bikes to So we, we, don't, we don't mind that then if people pick up a bike from the recycling area and and, and we have it in their garage or? Well, this is, you know, through the organization itself. Okay. So okay. you have to be a part of the organization to do that. So okay. they, it's monitored by the organization. How many volunteers do you have typically in a, on, 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 on a recycling event like this? So we get anywhere from about 20 to 30 volunteers and they vary throughout the day. Obviously some people don't make it the whole day or they can't make it the whole day, but we'll take any kind of volunteer. It always helps. So. Okay more it makes it easier. What are some of the organizations that, that, that have volunteered? In, so in the, the um, uh, CPAS, uh, which is what's uh, Sh uh, Schaumburg Citizen Police okay. Alumni Association. I oh, okay, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have um, the Schaumburg Environmental Committee. Um, th we have some volunteers that come from Schaumburg Township District Library, some volunteers from school district and um, 
we, we just have some different volunteers that volunteer on their own, some residents that come. How, how has this event grown over, over the years? Well, I think the first year we only collected about 9,000 pounds of electronics. Uh, this year, uh, last year, we collected over 110,000 pounds of electronics, and we had about 1,800 cars drive through our event. Really? Oh, no. Yeah. So. What happens at the end? I mean, you, you see, from 10 o'clock in the morning until? Until 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock? Um, 3 o'clock rolls around. Um, it, it's actually people are pretty mindful about the end of the event. Okay. And, uh, so it, it tapers off right there at the end, and um, we cone off the entrance, and, and we start to clean up. So. Um, it takes a, you know, an hour or so to clean up after the event, and then all the electronics go back, and, and they're processed properly so that uh, people's data is safe. So if someone wants to volunteer for, uh, for this event, uh, who do they contact, who do they call? Um, there's a, a, a thing on our website for volunteers. It's a link on the front page, and they can click there and say that they would like to offer to volunteer for the event. and that, that person will be in contact with me then, or I'll be in contact with them. Is there, is there a, uh, a web address you can give, or? It's or, Phil, or, or, or if there's a, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's phillishomberg.com, and on the front page, there's a little link at the bottom and the scrolling part that says volunteer, and they okay. can click on that, and they put in their name. Are they, are they pretty good about that, people calling up and? and uh, yes, we've had quite a few miscellaneous volunteers that just like to, they offer their time because it's a, a very good cause, keeps a lot of stuff out of the, our landfills. And out of the garage, too. Yeah, and out of the garage, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So we can all use a little extra space, that's for sure. Yeah, so. but that's interesting. But what kind of clothing do you get? I mean, it, the, the clothing is all sorts of clothing. Um, people bring just about anything. And even if you think that it's not reusable, they'll still take them because then they'll use them either for rags or they'll actually shred up the material and reuse it for other things too. Okay, so. all right. And it, how would they bring it? If they bring clothing, they bring it in a bag? Or? It could be in a bag, a box, or just loose. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so. Um, it, they could just, and anything in the household that you think somebody could reuse, they'll take too okay. as well. So okay. it doesn't have to be limited to clothing. Thank yeah. you very much. And good luck on a successful recycling event. It's uh, good for the environment. It's good for the, for, the, for the village as well. So I appreciate it. I appreciate the support of the village too. It's great. Well, thank you. Schomburg Sister Cities Commission is busy preparing for German exchange visitors coming in May. Learn more about the program next here on Speaking of Schomburg. Schomburg Sister Cities Commission is responsible for planning exchanges to and from our sister cities in Germany, India, and Japan. Suzanne Paschel and Bob Schmidt join us to tell us about the exchange program and how we can get involved. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schomburg. And how did you get involved with this program? Um, well, I'm a longtime resident of Schomburg and I've always kind of been interested in um, by one, the heritage of our um, village, and also kind of exchange programs. So it just was a natural fit for me. Oh, okay. And have you, have you gone on some of these exchanges? I have. I've been to Germany um, one time, and I have hosted several times, and I generally host the same person, and so I've become quite good friends with him and his wife and their daughters. Okay. So when I went to Germany, I stayed at their home. Okay. What town were you in in Germany? Um, the town is Rinton. Oh, sure. And uh, it's part of the Schomburg, um, uh, it's more like a county over there oh, than, sure. it is, than it is a city. So oh, sure. comprising. And they had the, the Pied Piper of Hamlin, I guess, too. Very close by. We did yeah. see the Pied Piper. Did you see the show? Yes. That, that's we did. It. And there's the Visa River right, right near there? The Visa River, exactly. Yeah. We took a little boat trip. and. Oh, that was nice. Bob, how did, how did you stumble into this program? Uh, I'm a second-generation uh, German-American, okay. and in 2000, my son took a soccer team to uh, the area uh, through the SAA, and he asked me to go along with him, and I've been interested in it ever since. Uh, very exciting to go over there and, and visit the people and enjoy the culture that they have there. Yeah, it's an interesting place, too. How about the, the Schomburg? There's actually a Schomburg Castle, too, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's a, there's a palace there's a, with a prince. Right, correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me about tell me tell me about some of your adventures here when when you were over there. I mean, you stayed with the host family, right? That's correct. And, yes. and you did as well. Yes, okay. Hartmut and Erica were my hosts, and okay. it was very interesting. Uh, 
they took us around to various uh, sightseeing spots there. Uh, matter of fact, the last weekend we were there, uh, Hartmut took us to uh, where my grandfather came from in uh, Guilford's house in Germany, which okay. was really interesting. How about the food? How was the food over there? Oh, the food is fabulous, yes. And good old good German food and beverages. Yes. And uh, a lot of seafood and um, yeah, it, was, it was just... How about Meyers Bitters? Did you, did you ever try that? I did not. No, I didn't either. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> we did try the Schomburger beer, though. Okay, sure. <laughs> That's sure. good. That's very good. Oh, yes, yes. And, and there's a, there's actually, people don't realize, there actually was a prince, and it was the last principality that, that joined the German Union after Bismarck United Germany. So, uh, but we've, I, I've been there a couple of times and visited uh, uh, the, 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 the castle and, and also the prince's palace, and he's got one room that's all gold. And, yes. Mm -hmm. and so so what, do, what are you guys doing now? What, 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 are your, what are your plans? Well, we're getting ready for, um, we were having a group coming from Schomburg, Germany, to uh, visit with us in May. So we're preparing for that. And it takes uh, a lot of effort, but a lot of folks are involved with getting the agenda together and finding the places for them to stay and, and places, you know, for, them, for us to take them to eat and that sort of thing when they're here. So How many are coming over? There are five coming this time. Okay. So, and they're all... Um, yeah, they're all males. They're actually involved with the government there. So. Sure. How many years have you been involved with Sister Cities? This is probably, well, I started out with the association before I was actually on the commission. So sure. it's probably, I've been probably eight years. Okay, all right. That is kind of satisfying, though, isn't it, to, to see that kind of welcoming that you get when, when you're over there? Absolutely, yes. And it is. You, you form these relationships, when it's life, life, lifelong friendships with people. You know, they, we have a lot in common with them. Okay. And you're, you're part German. You, you know. I am, yes. I have German on both sides of my family, <laughs> so yes. And in fact, my uh, grandparents came from a village very close to Renton, about 40 miles away, actually. So that's okay. where they came from. And it, they emigrated here about the same time as the folks came from Schomburg to settle here. Is it 1850? Is mm -hmm. Right around there. And of course, there's a direct link b between Schomburg and, uh, and, and over there and Schomburg over here. here. Yes. Is that correct? Right. You can look at St. Peter's Cemetery and, and see some of these names that are very similar. Well, they're the same names. Exactly. And that was interesting. We, would, we did get to see my, my, my kids went to school at Nergi, the Nergi grade school. Sure. And of course, we saw the Nergi home when we were over in Germany. And we saw, you know, you see where those names came from because some of them you didn't. I had no idea. But. Yeah, yeah. And Schmidt, I mean, it, that's so obvi obviously <laughs> German. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, one of the other things we have uh, is uh, an exchange student coming over to do an internship. She will be here for six weeks, uh, latter part of the summer. She'll be working at uh, Spring Valley Nature Center and the Heritage Farm. Oh, how, how wonderful. So we're excited to have her over and uh, looking forward to having, you know, possibly getting a continuation with interns. Okay. How did that, who arranged that internship and how did that come about? Well, came um, actually the person who is, I guess, sort of my counterpart over there in sure. Germany. He sent us a note saying, you know, they had this opportunity. Is there any way we could accommodate that? And so the wheels started turning here and we got the people from the park district involved and um, found a host and a, a position for her. And it turns out that we also have hosted her father on a previous visit when he came over here. So we do have a connection to this scout. No, no, the Sister Cities Commission is divided, in, in, not really divided, but there's, you, there's a the G German kind of group and then there's a, the, the J Japanese yes, group. Yes, right? Japanese and, in, and, and, and Indian. And an Indian. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I've been a couple of times uh, with the Numerikawa, which is our, our Japanese sister city. Mm -hmm. So uh, what other, you know, there are other, other exchanges at all as far as, let's say, uh, Numerikawa is concerned? or. We've had some um, students that have come over, and uh, there's one in the making. It's, uh, it, it, it involves a lot more planning, and they plan out a lot further. But I think it was, it's going to be 2016 or 2017 when we have a group coming over again. How large a group do you anticipate coming over? I'm not positive. Um, I don't, we didn't have a, but it would be like probably 12, 15 you know, but we don't know that for sure. Okay. And there's a pel pen pal program going on now so that the kids are getting, um, you know, acquainted with some of their 
um, the students who probably will come. We had the youth orchestra um, on an exchange trip both in Germany and also in Japan. And when the, the youth orchestra played in, in Japan, these young girls just swooned over the couple of bass players, and, <laughs> and these guys are saying, these guys are saying, this is the happiest day of my life, you know? <laughs> they were writing email addresses uh -oh. on their wrists, and the girls were, were uh, you know, these guys are blowing kisses, and I mean, it was like, a, like a rock stars, Good. rock stars. But uh, no, it's it's a wonderfully uh, program. Started, who started the Sister Cities program? Was it was it Dwight Eisenhower? Wasn't it? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure either. I, I think, think it was, it was, it was Dwight Eisenhower. I think you're right, yeah. though. Start, you started it a, a good way to 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 bring peace to, on Earth is to exchange ideas and exchange uh, the kind of visits you guys you guys uh, you know, are involved with. So, well, and what's your when's your next trip? My, yeah, my trip yeah, over, yes, yes. I, you know, I haven't had, I don't have it planned yet, you yeah. know, probably in 2016. Suzanne, how about yourself? Um, well, if a, if a group goes this fall, we don't know yet if a group will go in the fall. There's okay. a possibility that there would, and then, you know, I'd like to go then, and otherwise next year. Now, if somebody wanted additional information about Sister Cities, who would they, who would they contact? Well, they can contact either one of us or um, Kathleen um, at the Kathleen village. Kathleen Tempesta, mm -hmm. yes. And, and that, that, that call the village, 895, no, 847-895-4500. Ask for Kathleen Tempesta. There you go. And she'll be able to yes. give you the appropriate direction. And she's over there listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing, we do have an exchange currently going on. Uh, we're going to take a soccer team over to uh, Germany in uh, the end of August. Uh, no, end of uh, June. Wow. And then they'll be coming over here at the end of September, 1st of October. So they'll have about, you know, 15, 16 boys going over there with coaches. And uh, similar, we did one, like I said, in 2000. I yeah. went over there. And then 2004, another exchange. And now this one. That's great. So well, we're excited. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks, Thanks Robert. Okay. Good to see you once again. And you're in a park board, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next month for an all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town. Mm -hmm.